Um, the first book uh, was written from a bunch of lecture notes and then was floating around the web, primarily by Tom Strong. There were four authors on it. Uh, John Becker, who most of you know is uh, the uh, Linux Nick driver writer for pretty much every driver on, on Linux. Um, two other authors, Savarese and uh, Mike Warren. Uh, so this, this quote, uh, this book has just recently been re-released in two varieties. Uh, Beowulf Cluster Computing with Windows and Beowulf Cluster Computing with Linux. And uh, the reason we have this one here is uh, uh, microwaves given it away for free. Uh, this about the two, the first two thirds or maybe the first three quarters of the book are identical to uh, Big Wolf Plus and Linux. So we brought this one, this is John Lloyd's actually. Uh, and uh, this is published at MIT Press. You can go there and get it. You get all the Baywolf clustering books for the Dark Press and MIT Press books. Uh, this is as of 2002. Uh, he talks about message passing interface, parallel virtual machine, quite a few of the major subjects that he talked about with parallelizing code and uh, the operating system. So, because this was so succinct, this pretty much describes a price performance uh, paradigm that, that is, is key to Beowulf clustering. There's many ways to get high performance computing in uh, expensive machinery, uh, proprietary machinery, machinery, and there's many ways to put together clusters that uh, will give you moderate performance for short time. So we'll talk about both ends of the spectrum and what's in between. Now, I have about five websites, so if you have to leave early, uh, the only thing you really have to know is I'm going to publish, I'll get Jerry uh, the presentation, I'll put it on my website. Uh, Screen Linux is the website of our, our user group, some people, John, uh, I remember what it's a Debian available user group. We primarily use Debian uh, because of our uh, attachment to the uh, package manager. And uh, you don't have to use Debian for clustering. We'll talk about some of the other distros. Um, but if you want to send us an email, Debian is a group at MIT.edu, and we'll send you the links. Um, <clears throat> Beowulf.org is the central point, the central repository for uh, links to software and what have you. It's kind of old in the tooth now. It used to be John Becker's site at Dragon Space Flight Center. It says this dot GFC. GSFC.org, whatever it was, NASA.gov. Um, it's now Beowulf.org. And all, all, all the Linux drivers that Becker wrote are now over at skill.com. He's the CTO of Skill Beowulf Operating System. Uh, so uh, a lot of the things that you will recognize from the says this page of pages are now at skill.com or Beowulf.org. I don't think Beowulf.org is skilled anymore. Just uh, this Linux driver that, that skill. And, and of course, uh, you can download skill. Skill is a Red Hat variant. I don't think they're on a 2.4 kernel yet, but uh, skill affords you is, is some very nice to have. They will tools, and we'll talk about those. Um, and we'll also talk about uh, other other resources. Okay. So how do you build a good, fast, and cheap cluster? Uh, when we talk about clustering in general, and particularly payload clustering, clustering in general, we'll talk about some of the, the ways to get failover capabilities and load balancing out of just general purpose clusters, not necessarily quote unquote intensive clusters. Uh, you look at the design of your client node. Virtually every payload cluster has one really powerful head node and lots and lots of clients. As many client nodes as you can buy based upon your price performance ratios. So the variant and all rule of thumb is if you've uh, got a one gigahertz processor, generally speaking, that'll give you about a fifth as many flops or ops. If we care about flops, uh, if you care about ifs or ops, then you probably can go to a different CPU. You can go to uh, Transmat Cluso, which is Great for serving up web pages, not so good for floating point performance. But they will, uh, scientific computing, people love the floss, so we, we might create everything. So a gigahertz processor 
generalized idea of 200 megaflops. You can, you can do better, it's very uh, application code specific. But for the longest time, we didn't have uh, a, a, a network topology that would finish this equation off that was anywhere near in the same price to performance ratio as our high quality CPUs that flip over on Moore's law life cycle and our high quality RAM that came with Moore's, uh, Moore's law life cycle. So here's ASCII white. Now, you see the rows and rows, this, this is a very highly, I, I, I'm pretty sure this uh, is IBM. This was the, the, the strategic computer initiative busted up quite a few of these chart flops machines to a couple of different members. I think IBM got two of them. I got probably ASCII white and ASCII blue. Uh, there's two ASCII blues. And uh, the vast majority of these are, are client nodes. They've got a head node that puts all the distributed processes back together. But it, so otherwise, it, you know, it's a traditional head node client farm stable. But this is the very high end of the spectrum. It will give you all the assets get between one and I think, 12 teraflops. And, uh, and they're all Department of Energy grants. They're fantastically expensive, very customized. This isn't uh, a commodity off the shelf solution yet. It is. And so <laughs> now, see, we're not even in. Uh, the ASCII used to own the top of the top 500 list. And then along came to the, the Earth simulator, which is 43 teraflops. The Japanese just completely shattered the world speed record. So now there's a couple more clusters, the 2008 cluster of Los Alamos. And we'll be up to the double digit, digit teraflops at that point. So, all right, on the other end of the spectrum, um, some supercomputers of uh, clusters that they put together out of donated equipment. Uh, once again, Department of Energy facility um, in an early stable. Uh, so their their price performance ratio is, uh, is zero. They they get they get nothing into this. Um, they don't use 486s. It turns out that on the on the optimization scale, you're not going to be able to get data in and out of a 486 uh, in any reasonable amount of time to make it worth your your time and effort. Uh, we'll talk about some of the, the total cost of ownership concerns on running uh, machines that, that don't give you, uh, you know, enough performance for the amount of labor and cost of keeping it running. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of thousand node clusters out there. They, there's not that many two thousand node clusters. The, some, some of the uh, uh, algorithms for putting clusters together in subgroups and constellations tend to break down after. Uh, everything, uh, a lot of the, the network topology decisions uh, drive that. Little pockets, little pods of 64 nodes, uh, that's a pretty well understood uh, business right now. You can get uh, information on how to uh, set those up on the Cobble website. Um, and then fast. Um, when, I, when I use the term fast, I mean uh, how quickly can you feel the cluster? You've got a pending problem. If you want to find what the one billionth digit of pi is, and you need to put a cluster together a little quick, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can call up microwave, and that's all they do. Is sell clusters. Most of them are scientific application clusters. Uh, they sell the university and other universities. You can, uh, you can. The big guys don't do traditional ATX case firewall clustering, but they do do bladed. Everyone is into blades now. We'll talk about some of those solutions. Uh, IBM is into uh, Linux clustering in a big way, but, but it's not commodity off the shelf. It's a typical IBM approach, uh, you know, rock solid case designs. Um, so, uh, because of the phenomenal success of the middle range of uh, clustering, uh, everyone, Sun has blades, everyone is getting into some facet. Of multi path solutions. All right. Um, <laughs> how, how does it work? The, the, why is it a phenomenon? Uh, the cluster phenomena 
trying to almost everything or quite a few things that any particular IT department would have to do. Certainly, web servers are perfect. Uh, the, uh, we'll talk about one of the blade uh, companies, Arlex Technologies, sells a 4U rack that you can just throw as many blades in. I think it's a uh, 16 or 24. We have a um, And <clears throat> use round robin DNS, you throw these blades in. They, they you can either distribute a website. Uh, uh, transparently across them. They've got three mix on each card. You can channel bond them. You can uh, do a multiple. I mean, if you lose one, you can run into it and a serial port. It's broken. It's got more redundancy than you'll ever need. But it's, it's targeted at people who are bringing a web server or uh, uh, possibly, well, some tech based server over to a, a co location facility. Because it's based upon the, the Crusoe, so it doesn't draw much in the way of how it cool. It's just got a uh, heat sink, not a fan. Which uh, for you rack did you show us last time that you were able to down in the mechanical lab? You said it was really low cost. Yeah, that, that might have been the RLX technology. The, the, the two guys in the Or, uh, is that it? Awesome. Yeah, I think it, I think it was the RLX. Let me have a picture. Uh, it's, they, they've done a, quite a few things that, uh, People who work in data centers requested. They said, uh, I want to be able to turn on the flashing red light when, when I have a, a, a hard system for it. Or I want to be able to do hard reboots just by paying it for it. Uh, it's, it's quite a nice design. They've got an interface, a web based interface where you can log in and do explicit load balancing if you are on the client. <coughs> okay. We used to build supercomputers and high performance machinery uh, with Gene Andall's uh, law, you know, as, as a. Uh, this is a bit of a generalization, but if you've got something that parallelizes and bears in it, like calculating pi, calculating pi, I think it's a series of Taylor Cup um, mm -hmm. Well, you have to put all that together at the head node, so you've got this serial recollection at the very top. You have a thousand nodes calculating pi, and you have to reassemble. So, the fastest you'll be able to go is the amount of time that that serial phase takes. You. And this used to pan out quite well for years when, when they were designing uh, machines. But two years ago, Russell came to the study of all the machines on the top 500, and it turns out that all of them were outperforming what Amdahl's law would have predicted. All of them. So I have, I have this analysis. The, uh, the cluster conference from two years ago in uh, Los Angeles, they have these proceedings if you want to look at them. Most of these are available on the Cluster 2001 website. And then last month, we went to the Cluster 2002. And you can look at this, too, if you want. If you want to look through the table of con uh, contents, I, I have no problem loaning this to anybody. It's just that most of these presentations are not on there. This one has, has anything you find here that you might want to read about parallel virtual file systems, you can get online. This one doesn't look like they're going to put them online. Only the presentations are online, not the full papers. So, uh, so this was um, Kant's uh, description of, of how we, of what's going to learn of this. We have, and I've got another slide that talks about kind of limitations they have. So big old clusters as a subgroup of clusters overall benefit from the phenomena that you have when you, when you maximize Metcalfe's law and you cross-connect everything you have. If you've got two CPUs and SMP versus if you have four CPUs and SMP versus two CPUs and SMP, your average number of the idle cycles per CPU is less. Uh, so this this scales this scale is pretty well. You're going, to, you're going to run out of money before you, you start having a arithmetic drop off and scaling as a huge amount of IO and some of these, these CPU uh, cross connect solutions. Uh, and it, some of this is by virtue of the fact that you've got distributed cache, you've got cache 